uh, this is the second uh, webinar that we have. So the other one was was in July one, and uh, the the principle is here the same. We will first show OpenSA, then show some. Uh, or I will here in the slides show some things that have been changed and some things that I think have been improved and some new features and then some practicalities that are maybe also interesting for you to, to know. Um, yes, OpenSA, as you maybe have uh, heard about, um, is a open source software for life cycle assessment. Uh, meant to be used in a professional environment, so not a simple software or so, but really a software by which you can use to, to produce uh, and create and modify full professional life cycle assessment models. We created this here at Green Delta since some time already. 2006 started it all and we write, it's, it's written in Java, which means that it is, uh, uh, we have a version that is natively running in in um, Windows, of course, but also in Linux and, and in the Mac operating system without any virtual machines or so. Um, that's also, you see this also in the installation download uh, um, page in, in OpenNCA. Um, maybe open source, it's, it's worthwhile to, to think for a second what this means exactly. It means that the software and the source code is really available completely for free for everybody, um, and uh, which is of course a large difference to existing other LCA systems. Um, in order to preserve this nature of, of open source, um, uh, the source code is free, but everybody who wants to modify the the, um, the software uh, and distribute it again needs to. Um, also recognize the original uh, creator of the software and and also make the changes public therefore this um, this this open source nature so to say is is preserved um, for more the LCA practitioner this means not really anything besides that the software is, is fully transparent and for free um, and has no license fees, but uh, it does not at all influence how you make LCA models and has no implications on you then that you need to disclose anything or so. And we have some contacts with some companies who are quite sensitive about um, uh, buying software and so on. And the, because the software is fully transparent, you can really inspect everything and then be sure that there are no hidden things that you are not, that you do not want. So one four improved features. There, it was quite an effort to produce the the new version from uh, maybe six months or so uh, time uh, overall, um, or even a bit longer. And uh, one really important point for us was to increase the performance um, because we, um, um, uh, yeah, with upcoming Equimarine three and also social hotspot database. It was quite a long procedure to calculate a full system, and that that was uh, one one point that we wanted to change, and therefore we put a lot of effort on improving the performance. And here you see one uh, quick result compared to Simapo, not because Simapo is very bad, but because Simapo is, I think, very good in calculating large uh, unit process based uh, uh, models. But you see that we are in in the performance test that I did two weeks ago or so. We are really twice the speed of Zimapo now, which is really quite nice. So, so I think uh, that was really for us uh, one really important point to, to uh, increase and um, make better in the 1.4 version and I think we achieved this also to some extent. Um, and on the, at the same time, of course, quality assurance is important, so we made also tests against uh, um, existing other calculation system. For example, here you see a uh, comparison of a uh, system that we calculated in OpenSCA and the same uh, system, equipment processes, calculated in CIMAPRO, again using this as a reference. And you see that really the results are almost the same. This is the ratio of the calculated inventory flow in the overall lifecycle inventory. And um, yeah, it's almost always one on the very, really very small uh, single um, uh, so the, the maximum is, is uh, 1.00013 and so on. So that's really very, very similar and that's also quite important. 
Um, but besides this, it's also, I think, uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on usability, so the installation is easier. Maybe you have tried to install it already now, and previously you always needed to, in addition, install the MySQL server, which you do not need anymore. We have a really optimized, fast, and I hope also more intuitive workflow for many things. Uh, for example, you can now create directly a product system from within the process, so you do not need to go back to the product system tree, but you can just um, yeah open a process and then create a product system directly from there. Um, easy installation I mentioned already, and yeah, there are really a lot of different things, and maybe we have not too much time now. Um, um, it's um, yeah, uh, allocation modeling has been improved uh, a lot. Uh, um, you know, you can use the next starter packs directly now without need to log in, and the model graph has been improved uh, a lot. So that, for example, the location of the boxes is now of the process boxes is now saved, and if you open it again, the product system then it is where you have put it before, and this was not so in the previous version. Um, yeah, but then still, um, now we use an integrated database, which is uh, easier to install, as mentioned, but you can still use MySQL in a client-server environment. You just need to click here, I want to create a remote database, and then specify the location, and that works too, So, so because we have some users that rely on this feature also, so that's still uh, possible. Um, databases, um, this was... Uh, um, uh, a slight change. Previously, all these different databases were active or always. Uh, now, um, that's not the case anymore because then we can optimize the performance a lot. Therefore, you now uh, see when you open and have several databases uh, at first, you see now just gray, grayed out icons and you need to um, activate or double click and activate a database before you can use it. Also, the um, database format has changed. We, it's now called Zolka. And um, we have written a migration plugin for the old version where you can migrate your old databases to, to a Zolka format and then import these into either an existing one or, or a new database in OpenACA. Good. Um, uh, new features are we have now uh, largely improved the parameter model. Previously, it was so that, that the parameter name needed to be unique for one database. So, for example, here you see transport distance could be used only once um, for any process, and that's, of course, quite a limitation, um, especially for sensitivity analysis. And now you have, um, you link always a parameter to one process, and uh, Therefore, you can have many different uh, parameters which have the same name as transport distance, but can say for this process, transport distance needs to have this value and so forth. And that's really um, very nice for sensitivity analysis, and we have a specific feature also to allow this now, um, which we will also show slightly. Here you see this in on the screenshot. You see that here, the one process, you see different it's German, I see <laughs> different uh, parameter names, and for every process you see then the different parameter names, and you can uh, select, oh, I want here this parameter um, uh, to have this name in the sensitivity analysis. Um, then we have added regionalized impact assessment modeling, and uh, you can, um, yeah, really uh, not much more detailed now, uh, specify the location of a process in, and even at lines or areas, which is quite convenient in um, agricultural and food modeling, um, and have now also regionalized impact assessment modeling that is suited for this. So um, you see here the uh, outcome of, uh, or no, the, the uh, regionalized impact assessment uh, method, where you see the different uh, factors in different regions for, for a specific um, uh, impact category. And, uh, yeah, I can continue. So the model graph has really some improvements also. One is that if you want to build your product system manually, that is uh, that was possible before, but now you can uh, build a complete tier from one process so that you add all the processes, uh, all the products that are on the input side, you add the proposed processes there and can modify them and then go one step further and you do not need to do this individually for each one single product which means from this 
picture here where you have all these different transport and pipe board inputs. You can, if you f click here right on the right side and so on, then the next picture is like this. You have added all these processes and ins can inspect these and can proceed also to further expand your system. Um, we have now also a feature to import and export process data set as Excel files, so which is quite useful for data collection also. So you can just uh, share with the clients or with those who want to contribute to an LCA model access sheets and they enter the information and then you can upload these into the LCA model without need to care about data formats or so, which is quite useful for uh, more, uh, not some, so LCA expert, but rather for industry people, for example, who, who support an LCA study. Um, you can import these also. Um, you can Im use OpenLCA uh, as a format converter by importing and exporting uh, data sets. And here you see all the different data formats that are now supported. We are now even, we, we support uh, import of CIMA Pro uh, CSV files, uh, which can be really quite large, and, and so on. That's maybe enough, uh, some practicalities, if you do not have uh, further questions. Any comments from you so far, or should we proceed? I don't hear anybody and don't see anybody typing. Proceed, <laughs> thanks. Good. Practicalities. Um, um, one, one important thing, if you have been a previous user of OpenLCA, you need maybe migrate your databases and models from the previous versions. Please use the migration plugin that is available for the 1.3 version and then export your databases to the Zoika format. Um, and we have, I've written a text that explains this in, in OpenLCA org manuals. Um, um, and it is quite convenient if you use the uh, for this procedure, if um, you want to use it on the same computer, it is quite convenient to use the one for zip files for OpenSA. Just unzip this and start OpenSA. Then you can have the 1.3 and the 1.4 version of, of OpenSA running in parallel on the same computer. There's, uh, if you want to have more information, then check the manual. And also we have in the wiki an entry about this, which is maybe also useful. Um, and yeah, here's some training, upcoming training uh, dates for OpenLCA that that uh, are, um, yeah, maybe interesting for you. Um, and then databases, you may have seen this already. We have this next slide, which uh, contains quite many different uh, LCA data sets uh, in databases. Just yesterday, we added the USDA database from the US Department of Agriculture. And it's including now the Equipment 3.1 database and, and so forth. Uh, and then guided case studies. That's a lot of text, but, but I just wanted to say quite uh, many who start newly in, in the LCA field are a bit unsure about how to proceed in a case study. And if you have also this feeling, then please contact us and we offer this as a service to jointly together with a client perform the first case study uh, in a bit varying level of detail depending on the needs. Um, and we provide feedback, and then this is quite a useful learning exercise, we think. Fine. And then, uh, yeah, if you have any other thing, uh, other idea about OpenSA, if we miss something or whatever, then let us know, and we, of course, would be very happy to discuss with you. That's for the first part. These are the end of the slides. You Maybe, Christina, you take over, and then... then uh, um, we, you were showing the, the live presentation. So you are Christina Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope you all can see properly my screen. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, great. So I'm going to go through some of the comments that already Andreas uh, said, but in live, which I think uh, can be easier for you to understand. So, for example, now to start using OpenLCA, in case you are not uh, usually users of, of this software, you can import existing database, just selecting it from as a Dolka file you already generated before, like for example, the 3 
and, and this would be um, imported into the software. You see it's really fast. Now, as Andreas commented, the improvement in the performance, this is thanks to the local database instead of using MySQL databases. But if you want, you can also create a new database that it's remote. Uh, just setting here the host port and, and user where you are uh, your database is located. Or you could create an empty database or database with reference data. So, for example, if we create a new database with ref data, we will see that it contains the elementary flows from OpenLCA, the flow properties, and the unit groups. And then here, of course, you could be able to import EquestPol, EquestPol2, or um, ILCD, and also another database existing in the, in the application or from exported Zolka2. So, for example, this is really useful if you want to combine different files, like CoInvent with Gabi, with um, the USDA database, and so on. You can do this in a single database really easy. I have prepared for this webinar, I'm using just the ELCD database, which is available for free in, in Nexus, in OpenLCA Nexus, which you can, from the welcome page on OpenLCA, just access. It's really just clicking here, the browser is opened. Um, and it contains um, yes, the, the processes from, from ELCD. I'm going to use this one, the beverage carton converting. As an example, so you can see that it's similar to the OpenLCA 1.3 editor, but it has also changes, like for example, the geography part. So in order to improve the regionalized assessment, um, not only, only in the impact method level, but also in the inventory level, the way locations are defined was in ACE, so now you can also define here um, the shape where your location, uh, your process takes place, or also import KML data with the coordinates of that location. Here, for example, we have Switzerland. Um, yeah, then in the, the inputs and outputs looks uh, pretty similar to what it was in, in 1.3 but it has usability improvements, like for example, when adding new flows, you can filter here, like searching, just introducing the name. It's reduced the categories where that can be, and I think that's really um, better for creating your, your process. Then in the parameters tab, also, as Andreas commented, we have now global parameters, input parameters, and dependent parameters. So the global parameters are those that are used, can be used in any place of the, in, in any data set of the database. And they are defined opening file preferences, going to um, global parameters, and adding here the new parameter. And this parameter will be available then in all the processes of your database. You can have also input parameters, like for example, I created this electricity and efficiency ones, and then dependent parameters, which are the ones that are calculated using other input parameters. I use this one as an example here, so that later we can do a sensitivity analysis in the product system level. The allocation tab was has been added because if you remember in OpenLCA 1.3, the allocation was defined within the inputs and outputs tab, but now there exists a, a single tab for this. Here you can define if you want to use causal, economic, or physical allocation. So the physical and the economic uh, allocation uh, requires some flow that the flow properties um, from the products in the physical one are the same. So, for example, they both use mass. Or uh, in the economic one, uh, that they have included a flow property, an economic flow property 
in their flow definition. So, for example, if we open this flow, we will need here to add the market value, for example, the, with the conversion that refers to one square meter, for example. Um, and then the causal allocation allows us to introduce directly the shares of its flow depending on its product. Um, and then we have also a cost tab where we can add the different costs per uh, product too. So once we have the process defined, we can create directly from here the product system. Again, if um, if you want to change the, the quantitative reference or the, the process reference, you can use the filter as before. And you can generate it uh, automatically, like add connected processes, and select if you want system processes if possible. So we generate the, the product system this way. And here we see the information for it. And in the model graph, we can see the different uh, processes that, take play, that uh, completes our, our model. As Andreas commented, we could, for example, if remove the supply chain, we could build it, we'll buy, uh, build only next tire, or complete the, the whole tire, for example, the, the whole graph. In the parameters, this is uh, new too, because here what appears is the different parameters per process. So you can use the same parameter name in different processes and then change it here within the product system. So for example, if we want to create a change the efficiency of the electricity network in our in this process, we could do this in this level without modifying the parameter in the process level. We have also these statistics a new tab where we can see the number of processes if it can it, everything is connected so we can perform the calculation or not and some additional information. So once we have our graph generated, we can uh, perform the calculation, uh, selecting the, the method and we can have a quick result or the analysis. So if we perform the analysis, we will see here also some changes because there are additional um, tabs or graphs that, that can be shown if you have selected it in the, again, in the preferences, experimental features, you can enable the experimental visualizations and you will have additional graphs in your analysis and quick results uh, view. So here we have, as you know, the inventory results, the impact assessment results, contributions, the total contributions per process, the total contributions per flow, and also the, the results for each process, both in, for the inventory and for the impact assessment. You have the contribution tree, where you can, you can see like the different, um, not the total, but how the, the tree is generated with the contributions per impact and per flow. You can also generate groups. This is this was also available in the 1.3 version. Um, you will have the locations also to see the different places where it takes place. Um, and then there are these new um, graphs that you can use, the bubble chart or the tree map, the sunburst, and of course the Sankey diagram is still there if you want to use it. So this was in the, in the product system level. We can also create projects to compare this product system. So you see that it has changed a lot comparing to the 1.3 version. Here now you have different variants, so the different product systems you can use. But you can use the same product system twice, for example, if you want to compare a parameter, the variation of one 
of the parameters used in it. So, for example, if we want to see how much does it affect using um, different efficiencies, we can do this this way. You can also compare uh, different product systems. So, you can use them and just calculate them. Also, seeing the differences. You could, um, of course, here too, if they are using the same uh, parameter, compare it in changing it too, like how much does it affect using different efficiencies and different um, uh, product system. And also you could compare how it affects the allocation method. So for example, using known or, or causal, comparing to the same uh, variant, to the same product system, sorry you could make the calculation too. There is an experimental feature that you can also activate that contains um, reports, create a report of the project, project results. So you could activate it. And you could generate generate a report from from the project you you have been using. Is there any question regarding the use of project? Maybe we should uh, one step, half a step further. This report that you that you then create, Christina, can you maybe do this or preview? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's. You see, you, you are supposed then to enter text in these sections. These are the sections that you usually need to have some text when you do an LCA study um, and make an LCA model. Uh, you can enter these in the report generator and uh, and then once you have, uh, and you can also select all, if all these are shown or not, uh, so it's not always, uh, you need not always have all the components. And when it's then generated, um, you uh, can you go back to the where you've been before with, with this report that has been created with all the to dos? Yes, this is now shown within uh, OpenACA, but it is uh, um, a full website, and you can uh, show the full uh, results even in uh, in a way that is uh, flexible and and uh, and uh, um, varying on on some input uh, on a, on a website. So that's quite quite a powerful feature that we are collaborating a bit further here in a project with EPA. But uh, so far, that's therefore it's still experimental. But so far, it's already useful and and uh, working. And and I think that's really quite a quite a nice uh, addition because it allows you to maybe more broadly distribute results of a case study than just uh, creating a PDF report or so. Yeah. There was a question about if it's possible to export the results of the project in Excel, and I would say no, it's not yeah, it's possible. Yeah, that's not possible. Of course, you can um, you can um, you can export the pro product systems as we explained, uh, and then make the comparisons there. Um, but you cannot export the projects uh, so far to Excel. Okay. If there is no more questions, I would uh, comment quickly also some improvements in the impact assessment method definition. So you can see here how it has changed comparing to the 1.3 version. Now we have the impact categories also in the first um, tab. And then you can define the, the impact factors. We have uncertainty for its impact factor if you want to define it. And also you can use formulas now to, to define the, the factor value. 
and for the formulas you could use parameters the same way you use them in the processes. So we have again global input and dependent parameters. You could add here a new parameter and just um, use it afterwards in the impact factor definition. Um, also, we have included a regionalized option. So, for example, I'm going to open this method which already has some save files. So what we do is having in save files defined uh, the regionalized parameters we need for the factor calculation and then use these parameters imported from the save files um, here in the parameter tab so you see they come from a save file and use them to define the impact factors. Uh, if you want to know more about this regionalized approach there is going to be um, a, a webinar or a training I think in September so just in, in case that you are aware of this. And I think that it's more or less all. Of course, there are many other improvements and features, like for example, if you are a developer, you have a SQL query browser that you can use, formula interpreter, and, and so on. Do you have any, any questions? Yeah, as a, one, one suggestion was that, that we relate also to the, co to the comment, if it's possible to export to Excel the, the project results, that's indeed not, as I said, not possible, but you can really export, I was now aware afterwards, you can export the results to um, HTML. So this is somehow maybe also quite useful, and uh, but it's, it's not Excel, of course, yeah, but, but uh, that's um, also something that is quite related. Um, yeah, but, but thanks for the suggestion. More, more questions, suggestions, ideas, or comments, maybe, from you? Mm, not really. Did you find this useful so far? Or what do you think? <laughs> um, okay, there was a question about creating a method from existing impact categories. I would say no, but you could copy the existing method and paste it and then modify there if you want to change the name or the description or delete other impact categories and so on and, and do that way. I am, yeah. So it's not, yes, it's not possible to, to combine, um, select from different methods as we have organized it here, different methods, uh, this and this category and put it into a new method but you can, you can, uh, yeah, you can copy and paste and then modify an existing method, which is maybe something I could work around. There was another question from Amy, I think, so from Tudor. There was a problem with normalization factors before. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but we, we made now some, really some tests and I think the normalization and weighting now really works. So, so this, um, um, yeah, so in, in the 1.3 version, the export uh, of normalization values did not really work nicely, and now that's that's much better taken into account. And therefore, I, I think now we uh, we provide now um, with the um, 1.4 database method pack also the normalization and weighting factors where relevant, and this works, I think. Otherwise, please let us know. But but I think this is uh, now really um, working. Uh, so you mean that it was not applicable, that you could not select it, or that it was not really taken into account in the calculation? Because he's saying... Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, can you... It was not taken into account. Okay. Uh, but Andreas, you said that this has been uh, reviewed, no? no? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is, this is uh, considered. <laughs> Any other uh, questions also? For us, of course, uh, for us it's a bit interesting to get involved with, with people and, and organizations who are using OpenCA. We, we are realizing that we have quite many downloads and we are realizing that, that really continuously and increasingly people use it. But of course, 
since you do not need to buy something from us and therefore do not need to get into contact with us, we are not aware really if there are any users and uh, uh, that have specific uh, maybe applications or so. Um, and therefore, if you have anything, then please let us know because that would be really very interesting for us. Um, yeah, for example, just we had contact with one Belgian university who was just saying, yes, we have successfully last semester used OpenLCA uh, with, uh, with 200 students in parallel or so, and that worked in the MySQL environment, And uh, but they did not contact us before and so on. So that something like this would be quite interesting for us. Um, uh, another question, further tutorials. Yes, we are a bit, um, yeah, this is a bit not so that we have upfront all the all the tutorials available on the website, but as you see, we have now, um, uh, yeah, we are creating videos and are also creating manuals and so on. And this is, um, um, yeah, this this will grow uh, definitely. And I hope, uh, at least our ambition was that when we re release it, we have written a manual that shows really the first steps successfully or, or sufficiently. And then, uh, yeah, uh, uh, if you have any specific questions, you can also contact us, of course. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> um, good. So this is uh, maybe a bit small here on the screen. So this is the OpenHCA3 cutoff system. Um, you see that, of course, the structure is very similar to the, the small database that Christina has shown. You see here the different processes. In, in these uh, categories that are that are yeah uh, following ISA categories and you this really uh, these are really a lot of different processes um, I think fifteen thousand or so um, and um, I just show you quickly one one product system here um, and uh, what did I do yeah, it's there. Ah, yeah, okay, sorry. Yes, um, and uh, and then you have this parameter uh, part, of course, that Christina has shown you, and then you have the model graph also, and uh, you see that I, I just opened it, and and uh, this is the the um, the model graph that I have previously uh, created or expanded here, and uh, and. Um, um, well, can you see now that here this is uh, this is uh, a slight a small selection of these these uh, of these uh, this uh, model graph and you see all this this one process of course here um, and you see that if I click here on this on this, on this plus then an additional uh, layer pops up. Uh, and uh, and um, and I could also expand this to the whole process uh, that are overall relevant or uh, connected, but that's not really useful for an equivalent system. Um, um, what I can then show, so so this is uh, this is quite a yeah I think quite a nice uh, large graph here, and then. You, I can also, uh, I've calculated here also the system and then you see that, for example, here these uh, these maps get really uh, a bit more detailed about the different uh, localized impacts that you have and you have quite uh, uh, quite different uh, um, uh, impact contributions to very different, uh, of course, to many different uh, uh, categories that exist, and that's really uh, from from some 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 case studies. Now it's really really practical to work with Equinrent three, and that's quite uh, was was also for us quite one goal. Although it's of course interesting that you try to shape one da one one software to one uh, specific database, but that's one very demanding database. I think also IT wise, and therefore it's quite nice if we manage to, to incorporate this or to, to fully uh, allow modeling this uh, in, uh, in, um, in OpenSea. So that was very, very short, uh, but, but maybe sufficient. Thank you very much. I um, hope this was somehow useful to you. And yeah, and we will continue, of course, development of OpenSea and it will be 
always, I think, or at least it will remain uh, as an open source uh, software and therefore I really look very much forward to, to continuing and uh, expanding the, the, the use of OpenSA.